Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. It is that time again. We are waking up with watches for the weekend, and everything you see is for sale. Reach out to Tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing of anything you see here. Names, references, and available prices in the description below. And remember, we are always looking to build inventory. We will buy your watch or a full collection on the spot. No upper limit on value paid. We pay full cash and transfer. And if you wish to... Contact Team Also at thewatchbox.com. Purchase and pricing or sales, your choice. Now, my choice. I'm starting out with a big piece. Yes, I promised you a Rolex in the clickbait thumbnail, but I find this more interesting. Launched in 2014 and discontinued in 2018, this is the most interesting modern full bracelet stainless steel Patek Philippe sports watch, the 5961A. This is the 001 model, and it is... 40.5 millimeters in stainless steel, gracefully crafted, handsome in almost every way from every angle, and remarkably legible as this is the resolutely sporty version of the watch that debuted in 2006 in platinum. It's a power reserve, an annual calendar. It is a flyback chronograph. It is all of those things and robustly loomed to the point that it is a no-nonsense sports prospect. Power reserve indicator for 55-hour power reserve, mono counter for chronograph hours and minutes on one scale, lovely blackened hands and indices in white gold, aperture style calendar, push your correctors on the side, and there's an AM PM indicator, so you have day-night distinction for setting the calendar. It's that little aperture down at the base of the dial. So this is a timepiece that wears well. With a 55-hour automatic winding power reserve and a chronograph caliber with vertical clutch and column wheel, it is long-legged and technically sophisticated anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. So this one has a robust set of resistances, a handsome wrist stance on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. Remember, 2014 to 2018, and this was the minority of Patek Philippe stainless steel production, and all steel Patek combined is only 20% of the company's annual output. Wear it on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. Let's do a quick loom shot here, because this is a sports watch, and while all 5960s generally are loomed, the 1As in steel are loomed better, and you can see that is distinct at night, easy to tell the time, day or night. This is a standout. This is one of my favorite Patek watches. We're not quite done with Patek, loomed Patek either, or annual calendars. If you want something a little bit more pared down, but perhaps a bit more colorful and subtle about its color, this is the Patek Philippe 5205-013, a 40 millimeter white gold case. This model was launched at Basel World 2018. In my opinion, it is the best version of the 5205 annual calendar moon phase. Now there's a lot to love here, specifically the gradient blue dial that you'll find at the center. This is a very handsome watch face. Note the use of a metal sector. So it's a sector style dial but the metal elements, the white gold indices, and the metallic tracks, the chapter ring from the inside out, they actually form the sectors of the dial with a polished dimple style seconds and minutes track outboard, a 24 hour dial coaxial with a moon phase down at six o'clock. And then once again, you have your aperture style annual calendars and you only need to reset this once a year during the jump from February to March. The case is gorgeous. Not only the lugs being concave and deeply sculpted and scalloped, but the fact that they are hollow, evacuated and skeletonized with a concave bezel, this one wears its size and its lines with grace. Throw it on the wrist. Once again, my wrist 16 centimeters, and it's a lovely option as a sportier dress watch. Again, automatic winding with a loomed dial. It's not quite as formal as a 5227 or a 5196, but it is a timepiece that manages to acquit itself well in either casual or formal attire, making it supremely versatile. Flip it over. You can see the movement here. This is caliber 324, free sprung silicon hairspring, nicely hand decorated. I would have showed you the case back of the 5961A, but it's difficult to do that with a bracelet on a watch, but you can see it's very similar in architecture. The main difference being here on one side, you can see there is a column wheel structure for the chronograph mechanism. Otherwise, both of these watches from the factory are guaranteed to run no worse than minus three plus two seconds per day. That's the combination of the free sprung Gyromax architecture, the Patek Philippe seal, the six position adjustment, and the Spiromax silicon hairspring. A good looking watch, a simple white gold clasp, or I should say buckle, it's not a clasp. Let's talk about a watch that does have a clasp momentarily. A 
watch that you were waiting for because you clicked on this thumbnail and you wanted to see the Rolex. Here it is. Launched at Paul's World 2018, actually the same year that this bad boy right here launched, but a little bit more robust and sporting. This is the latest generation of the Rolex GMT Master II, the 126710BLRO, the Bleu et Rouge. A timepiece with the Pepsi style bezel, as it's nicknamed because of its combination of blue and red. The original idea here was that it was a day and night distinction for Pan Am pilots who received the original versions of this watch back in 1954. You would set the time to Greenwich Mean Time, and then you would use the bezel turning in either direction to offset from Greenwich Mean Time to find your airport destination time. Well, since 1983, the GMT Master II has allowed us to read three time zones because now the local hour hand can be moved separately from the 24-hour hand, so I can truly set two different time zones on the dial. White gold hands, white gold indices, 100 meters water resistant, 40 millimeters in diameter, only 12.1 millimeters thick. It is a COSC chronometer and being highly anti-magnetic with a niobium zirconium hairspring. It's also long-legged with a 70-hour power reserve nearly three days. Throw it on the wrist. It's a good-looking watch. It's compact. Just like the 5205, it's a watch that has a lot of presence without being outlandish in its size or proportions. It's also a hard watch to find objectively, so Watchbox is one of those ways you can get your hands on one immediately if you so choose. Yes, there is a premium involved, but then again, time is money. How many years do you want to sit on a wait list? Throw a quick shot at the clasp. It's nicely made, polished internally. There's a beacon to hook, so it has that lift lock system. And then it also has the clamshell lock system. So you have two locking mechanisms. And then of course you have the easy link mechanism, which is five millimeters of in or out tool-free adjustment for fine tuning. The Jubilee bracelet, as super Jubilee, as it's often called, with solid center links, is very secure. You can see it vents the wrist well because of its many gaps between the tiny links, and because the cross section of the links so short, it is wonderfully supple on the wrist. A truly special watch, and since we did one loom shot, let's do another. As you can see, Rolex Chromalite Loom Bright and Blue by Night, an easy one to distinguish, that 24-hour hand also visible, so both time zones readily apparent even in the dark. From Chromalite Blue to Skyflake Blue, this is a watch, the SPGA 407, that actually came out with me unawares back in 2019, it launched at Basel, but I didn't notice the watch until I saw it at the Dubai airport. And then it just took my breath away and I wondered, was it a special edition? No, in fact, this is a watch, let me grab my polishing cloth, that represents a huge upgrade aesthetically, at least to my eye, over the famed SBGA 211 Snowflake. You have the same sort of ruffled, blown snow texture to the dial, but it has a lovely sky blue color. Note the use of diamond polished individual faceted uh, applique indices. Now the hands as well as the indices are fashioned manually on diamond tipped milling tools by artisans who just create these tiny components all day long. This is something you'll see at high horology brands and at Grand Seiko. The result is that everything metal on this dial truly does twinkle like a cut diamond. Taking a look at the case, it is the 3180 historic case rather than the, the 9S shape that you find on the Snowflake. This is not a modern case shape. This harks back to the original a caliber 3180 Grand Seiko of 1960. It's graceful, it's evocative, it's compact. And though 40.2 millimeters, because the lugs are short and stubby in that vintage tradition, it wears super easily on the wrist. Very comfortable, no problems here. I could recommend it for wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. It is a spring drive automatic accurate to 15 seconds a month and it has a 72 hour automatic winding power reserve. Take a look at the case back and although this is a dress style watch, note that it has 100 meter water resistance. So put it on a water resistant band. You can find this one has absolutely no trouble getting wet and wild at the pool in the summer. And being spring drive, you have that unique fusion of spring energy and mechanical kinetic energy, but with a quartz oscillator that is woken up by the induced electrical current created by this unidirectional governing wheel. The wheel is then subject to a back EMF that provides a braking force to slow slow down the release of kinetic energy from spring energy into kinetic and then towards the motion of the hands. So the hands are mechanically driven. There are no batteries, no capacitors, and no stepper motors in this watch. It is a mechanical watch built by a watchmaker, tuned by a watchmaker, and serviced for life by a watchmaker. But because of the presence of a quartz oscillator for governance, it has quartz precision with mechanical sole. Full clasp, very handsome, and of course black polished with Zeratsu tin plate milling on the case. This is 
is done manually, and while you typically see this kind of black polish on tiny components inside of Swiss watches, here on the Grand Seiko case, the entire case has been black polished and manually finished. Dial and case, this is a handmade watch. So is this. It's also a rarely seen watch. This is the H. Moser & C. Swiss Alp Watch S, the second watch in the Swiss Alp Watch collection, launched in late 2016 for the 2017 model year. It's white gold, 38.2 millimeters from side to side. It's 51 millimeters lug tall, again, only 10.3 millimeters thick, handsome in white gold with a wonderful vaulted cambered sapphire. It is a send-up, of course, of the famous smartwatch. It is not an attempt to crib the style in earnest. This is Moser being playful. And as you can see, it's also Moser being Moser, as you have a few May dial, which is the company's signature fade from bright at the center to dark at the edge. This is known as midnight blue. It's a little bit darker than funky blue. It's also a little bit less spare than the concept dial because you do have applique indices that make this an easier dial to read. There's a stop second or hacking function, so you can set the watch to the second. Wire style lugs, so it's a little bit like a Roddy mirror in that regard. It has a kudu strap that is minimally tanned and rustic with you know, the original hides imperfections. On the underside, a wonderful high-tech suede material, and you can see it's in bright signal green. You can see the movement, a manufacturer caliber built by Moser, but also note that it's properly sized and shaped for the case. That's something that only a pure manufacturer can do. A lot of times you will see manufacturer movements that are not properly sized or shaped for a case, and that's just sloppy. This HMC 324 is the way to go. Manual wind, case back power reserve, so it, is, it does have a power reserve integrated. It is a complication. A four-day power reserve, 18K beat rate, overcoil hairspring for precision, 14 karat gold escapement to extend the power reserve and create less friction that also improves precision. The watch, of course, features a platform escapement that lifts out as a single unit. The escapement, the balance, the hairspring, everything comes out as one piece. Another pre-serviced unit goes in. This is done at Moser's regional service outlets to ensure that the watch needs neither a long service nor a trip to Switzerland. So with Moser, because of this modular system, you get your watch back sooner. Gorgeous bridges and plates with the distinctive Moser double-crested Cote de Genève, which is a personal favorite of mine. Moser making all the small parts, too, from the escapement to the balance to that handmade overcoil through their precision engineering subsidiary that provides them with small components. Precision also provides a lot of parts to the rest of the high horology industry, including notably hairsprings to M, B, and F. Now, this is a watch that wears easily. Even if you want a big watch, uh, you got to give this a chance because though it's a 38.2 across, it's got a lot of presence. And though it's 51 millimeters lug to lug, the lugs are so spare that it wears smaller than that dimension. So the watch manages to be both large and impressive and compact and easy to wear at the same time. I did a recent Versus series with these two right here. These are both watches of modern construction within half a millimeter of each other in size, in stainless steel, automatic winding, and chronographs. And each one is a bit of an homage to an important time frame in the respective company's history. Uh, the Breitling Chronomat, launched in 2020 is an homage to the 1984 Chronomat, launched by the Schneider family as a sort of comeback watch after the bankruptcy of the late Breitling family period in 1978. The 84 Chronomat combined the famous chronograph, rotating bezel, rider tabs, onion crown, with traditional aviation watch feedback from the Frecce Tricolore, the aerobatic uh, military demonstration squadron of Italy, a lot like the Blue Angels, the Red Arrows, the Thunderbirds. They provided feedback to create the modern day chronomat. Of course, the modern day back then being 1984, it also included a wonderful vintage evocative Rouleau bracelet. Now I say vintage evocative because today this looks like an article of 80s style, but it was very much in vogue and au courant at the time. Today it's a wonderfully substantial and beautifully finished homage that's nevertheless objectively far better an article in quality than the original. 42 millimeters, but with a cushion case, this watch is 51 millimeters lug to lug. Column wheel vertical clutch, chronometer certified, manufacturer caliber B01 inside. It does have that automatic winding three-day power reserve. It does have 200 meter water resistance, and it is a nice sharp column wheel action. The bezel also has a wonderful 120 click detent. Have a listen. 
So though this watch is an aviation-inspired timepiece, because it's a unidirectional 120-click bezel, you can also use it as your diver. It looks fantastic on the wrist, and it's very comfortable. Between the Omega and the Breitling, I can tell you the Omega is perhaps the better-known model line as a Speedmaster, but the Breitling looks and feels more expensive on the wrist. It's truly impressive, and it's all down to the combination of excellent case proportioning, a handsome tone-on-tone -tone dial, that lovely polished captive bezel, and then the Rulo bracelet. And if you're wondering what's a captive bezel, you can see right there, it's a bezel held on by screws rather than snapped on. As a result, it's less vulnerable to getting snapped off. Now, the Omega, the Omega here is a tribute to 1957, but as channeled through the year 2013 when the Speedmaster 57 coaxial chronograph launched. Though it's a 41 millimeter because it is 54 millimeters end link to end link across the wrist and 16.6 millimeters thick, it does wear larger than the Breitling, even though technically this is a 41.5 and that's a 42. Nevertheless, you can see it wears well on my wrist, and if this is the look you prefer, the look of the original Omega CK2915, albeit not quite as faithful a re-edition or retro watch as the 2017 Trilogy model, this is a modern watch that pays I would say deference to the past without plagiarizing it. It does manage to be its own thing. 60-hour power reserve, also a column wheel, a vertical clutch, and a COSC chronometer. This one also has a coaxial escapement, a full balance bridge with a free spring index for stability, and a little bit more anti-magnetic qualities due to the silicon hairspring. So you have these two watches together. Which one did I choose as my favorite? Well, I'm not going to let you know. You're going to have to watch the Versus episode coming up soon in order to tell which one I would prefer to buy with my own money. In case you're wondering, this one is retail 9,000, this one is retail 8,100. They're both a better buy pre-owned. Let's talk about a watch that gets everything right. Also featured in an upcoming Versus, and against the Rolex GMT, no less, this is a 2020 model year launch, 40.5 millimeters in stainless steel with ceramic bezel. This is the Grand Seiko Spring Drive GMT SBGE257, a watch that takes the formerly Brobdenagian proportions and dimensions of Grand Seiko Spring Drive complications and necks it down to a 40.5 that makes it wearable on my wrist and comparable to watches that hither two wouldn't have been comparable due to sizing disparities. 200 meters water resistant, three day power reserve, accurate to 15 seconds a month, and with 12 slash 24 hour dual time capability. This is a watch that looks good, wears well, is rugged, is versatile, and gives you a wonderful travel complication in the GMT. You'll also note, unlike the Rolex, here we have a dial that is truly hand finished. Same qualities as I mentioned on the Skyflake. All of these components on the dial are executed by hand and then placed by hand, and the case has that same black polished tin plate Zeratsu surfacing. You cannot see the movement on the reverse side here, but it's the same spring drive technology that we saw on the Skyflake, which means you get the same automatic winding, three-day power reserve, stop seconds capability, and the preternaturally smooth glide of the seconds hand, because this watch does not have a start-stop Swiss lever escapement. It has a unidirectional governing wheel. Same thing, no batteries, no capacitors, no stepper motors, mechanical motion, but quartz regulation, so accurate to the 15 seconds a month. And if you prefer to have a ambidextrous watch, here we have the crowned out in an unobtrusive four o'clock bracelet, handsome, removable links fixed by screws, two half links for precise sizing, and then a trigger release single fold deployment. A really good looking watch and with that green ceramic bezel, uh, probably my favorite between the two, hint, hint. I'm not telling you which way the competition goes, but I definitely like the look of this one better. Now here's a Rolex for which Grand Seiko has no answer. There will not be a Versus because this remarkable reference 128348 RBR is absolutely unlike anything else you are going to find in the Rolex catalog. It is a day date 36 with diamond paved bezel, diamond paved Roman numerals, and a turquoise dial. That's right. This is a day just 36 with Rolex handset diamonds and a hand finished turquoise stone dial. Throw this one on the wrist. And you can see why this is considered the most imperial of Rolex references. Nicknamed the president because of its famous and sometimes infamous past ownership base, it's a watch that's traditionally been Rolex's power watch. Since the launch of the first model in 1955, the combination of the day and the date has been a distinction that sets this one apart from the rest of the Rolex line. Still 36 millimeters. You don't need size in this watch to pack gravitas. Visually, you can see this is a supernova. It's a fireworks show on the 4th of July 
supply absolutely impossible to miss. And in the boldest and oldest of gold, yellow gold, that Rolex President bracelet absolutely explodes off my 16 centimeters circumference forearm. It's 100 meters water resistant. It has a 70 hour power reserve. Rolex manufactured caliber 3255 with a double quick set. There is a lot to love here, but ultimately it will come down to the diamonds and the turquoise. This takes a strong, striking, and confident owner to wear. A person who's got panache in spades and can wear a watch like this with a wry smile and absolute confidence. Note the encrusting of the gems on the bezel and the numerals. Rolex uses optical scanners to ensure that the clarity, the carats, and the color of each absolutely identical so there's no gradient or disparity between them. A very, very special watch. Okay, now starts a run of crazy watches as we finish up our show. This is a model launched in 2013, uh, about 43 millimeters. You can see this is the IWC Portuguese Flying Tourbillon. It is the reference, uh, 5463, and this is the 05 model. Rose gold, sunburst blue metallic dial, and a flying tourbillon. IWC was late to the tourbillon game, or at least the Portugueser model was late to the tourbillon game, as there was not a Portuguese tourbillon until the mid-2000s, 2004 with the tourbillon mystère. So, IWC reckoned they needed a special tourbillon to make up for lost time, so they decided their tourbillon regulators would be flying tourbillon. No upper bridge to block your view of the mechanism. I should also mention that IWC puts that visibility to good use as... This movement is a combination of hand finish and mechanical finish, but the tourbillon carriage itself is entirely hand finished and exquisite. Now the watch has rose gold indices, rose gold Arabic numerals, rose gold hands, and it's very traditional, just like the original 1939 reference 325. This is a pocket watch sized movement in a wristwatch, and that was the genesis of the Portuguese's size. Accuracy. At the time, the Portuguese importers Rodriguez and Teixeira, who imported IWC, wanted a wristwatch as accurate as a pocket watch. The only way to do that 1939 was to use a pocket watch caliber. And so right here we have the 54-hour power reserve caliber 98900. It's based on a modern-day IWC 98000 series pocket watch movement. And you can see there are many pocket watch homage elements here, starting with the extravagant swan's neck style click spring and the extensible click. You can then see that it has a traditional center wheel architecture and a three-quarter style bridge, and where you'd normally have an oversized balance wheel beating away at a pocket watch cadence. Instead, you have the underside of the tourbillon carriage. Take note, there are jewels in golden chiton, a nod to the pocket watch era when the jewel would be pressed into the chiton, and then the chiton would be pressed into the bridge. Lovely circular ripple-like Cote de Genève. Note that they actually have a gradiated thickness, and they do sort of radiate out from an imaginary center point right underneath the tourbillon, where IWC inserts a solid gold medallion to mark the significance of this complication. And note, adjusted in five positions, high horology style. This watch is a limited edition of 100 pieces, and unlike most IWC limited editions, it is individually numbered, razor thin, gloriously detailed, and the wonderful thing about this watch is unlike a lot of high horology tourbillon regulators, this is a mainstream brand, which will be around forever to service your timepiece, which will be around forever to provide expertise and parts if you need it. That's the advantage of buying a Richemont, a Swatch, an LVMH brand watch, because you know you're set forever when maintenance concerns are addressed. Always parts, always know-how, always tools. And general, even for something like this, a tourbillon, you should be able to get the watch serviced regionally if you live in Asia, Europe, North, or South America. So there's a lot to love about this watch, a very cool piece. This would be my choice among Portuguese tourbillon. But because this is watch box, you have your choice of Portuguese tourbillon. Here, we have that first Portuguese tourbillon model that I mentioned, made in 50 pieces in ultra-white platinum. This, 44.2 millimeters, is the IWC Portuguese Tourbillon Mystère. It is a flying tourbillon, vaulted to the top of the dial, flanked by Cote de Genève and black polished screws, the tourbillon regulator, as before, entirely hand-finished, unlike the Portuguese that you just saw. This is an overcoil oxidized blue to maximize the visual impact and the nod to the pocket watch era. It's also 
an automatic winding seven day power reserve with power reserve indicator based on the 50,000 series automatic. The idea was simple, an IWC seven day automatic winding caliber the size of a pocket watch movement built to fit Portuguese and pilot sized cases. You have the bi-directional Paul based Peloton winding system invented in the late 40s and implemented in the early 50s by IWC watchmaker Albert Peloton. But here you see these pale white poles that are used, they are ceramic, solving the long-standing dirt on the movement phenomenon that was one of the only weaknesses of the tough and efficient bi-directional winding Peloton system. It's adjusted in five positions with the ceramic uh, poles, you do not have the dirt on the movement problem, and if the medallion on the reverse side of the Portuguese tourbillon was impressive in solid gold, well, upping the ante, here we have one the size of a basketball. Circular Cote de Genève, solarization on the ratchet wheel, handsome satination on the wheels, and black polishing on the screw heads. Truly impressive. The mass in the hand is absolutely awe-inspiring. At 44 millimeters in platinum with a matching platinum clasp. Take a look right here. This clasp, I love this clasp. It has the evocative old-school IWC International Watch Co. logo. Polished internally, you can see externally, it's both satinated and polished for handsome contrast and total security while donning or removing your your watch. Now, it's important to note that the Portuguese lines are preserved. You have those lovely integrated lugs. This is one of the few similarities between the 1932 reference 96, unofficially the first Patek Calatrava, and the IWC Portuguese in 1939. They came out of that same era of form follows function design, and they have very similar case profiles in spite of the disparity in outright size. You can see there's a lot of nods to the original reference 325 here. You have those same vertically arrayed Art Deco style Arabic numerals, the dimple style minutes track outboard, the leaf style hands, the small seconds, and of course you have that case profile. Note the use of a polished and concave bezel to visually pare down the mass of the watch. You can also see a concave case back that's stepped back somewhat. So when the watch is on the wrist, it looks a lot more compact than a 44 millimeter timepiece. And you can see I'm wearing it just fine here. I would recommend it for a wrist as small as mine, 16 centimeters in circumference. Very handsome and very impressive. All right, let's finish with a big piece. Figuratively speaking, how often do you see a hacking tourbillon regulator? Not too often, but then again, how often do you see a tourbillon by Alango Unzona? Very, very rare. This is the Alango Unzona 1815 tourbillon. Three day manual wind power reserve, immaculately finished front and back. This is a watch that cops the pocket watch look because that is how they roll at Langa. 39.5 millimeters in diameter and slender. You can see this watch is something special. Let's start with the dial side. The dial is silver white, galvanized, but it's made of sterling silver. So you have a precious metal dial inside a precious metal case. The hands are fired blue steel alpha style hands, beautifully elegant. You have the Arabic numerals, which is how you know it's a Langa 1815. Remember, Roman numerals is Richard Langa. Uh, stick indices is Saxonia. Arabic numerals is the 1815. Now note that the tourbillon carriage, and I'm going to get as close as I can, is a wire style or filigree, as minimal as possible. It is an overcoil hairspring and free sprung for precise adjustment and concentric beating of the hairspring in any position. All of the screw heads are black polished on the dial side. Note that it doubles as a seconds hand because it is a one minute tourbillon. Of course, it has that hacking mechanism. So anytime you wish, you can freeze it and appreciate the mechanism. The bridge itself is beautifully black polished on its flanks, and then the bridge has an angular faceting as it approaches the center. So you can see it's alternately satinated and polished on those faceted sides. Now take a quick look at the reverse side. Everything is gorgeous. You have jewels set in screw fixed chiton, upping the ante from the IWC, which use, uses gold plating to create the look of chiton. These are real removable golden cups for the pivot jewels. Note that this watch features both black polished and fire blued screws. It has both. No reason to settle for just one. A three-quarter style bridge, another nod to the pocket watch era, to this Saxon pocket watch making tradition of which the original Alangu Unzona was an important part from 1845 on. Note that a diamond capstone is used for the underside of the tourbillon. That is a real faceted cut, brilliant cut diamond. So whereas the rubies here are synthetic, 
That's a real diamond. There's also freehand engraving on the balance cock with a lovely organic scrolling. This is all done using a burin and a chisel. None of this is done with a lathe or a machine. So that's all hand laid. As a result, no two will be exactly alike. Note the use of one, two different sizes of engine turning, creating a lovely perlage across the base plate. And then you can also appreciate that though there are not many edges to the bridges here, every single one of them has a mirrored bevel. This is finishing second to none in the industry. And it's a wonderful golden hue because of the nickel copper zinc alloy, the German silver, as it's described, used by Alango Unzona. It does not need to be rhodium plated like brass. As a result, you can see the golden hue, the natural golden hue of the copper. And this watch is included with a full deploying clasp, so you get this feature rarely included on longer watches. It's generally an upcharge option at the dealer. Uh, so a lot of longer watches, even complications, come with pin buckles. This one, not the case. Easy to wear on a wrist of any size. It's also a formidable unisex option. Guys, reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com, to buy anything you see here.